believe my eyes? Is that Freud you're reading, or are you just using the cover from his book to disguise a copy of Forever Amber? It's Freud. Well, now, that's excellent, Rusty. I'm gratified no end to see you take an active interest in psychology, to see that your association with me has developed a lust for knowledge, for an understanding of my methods. Uh-huh. It says, in 1894, Freud took the decisive step of replacing hypnotism as a means of resuscitating buried memories by the method of free association, mm -hmm. which is the kernel of the psychoanalytic method. Well, interesting, huh, Rusty? Yeah, guess so, Dan. But what does it mean? <laughs> oh, well, my error. I shouldn't expect too much. Dr. Daniel Danfield, student of crime psychology, has many times provided the police with a solution to a baffling crime. There's an interesting case ahead for the doctor today. We'll call it The Case of the Darkened Faith. Rusty, would you mind telling me what's in the mail for today? Oh, just the usual bunch of crackpot letters. One from some police chief in a small town upstate mm -hmm. about a bricklayer who was murdered. Yes, how was he killed? His wife threw a brick at him. <laughs> just an ordinary crime of passion. And one from a woman who's threatening suicide. Yeah, does she give a reason? Yes. Her husband likes everything she likes. <laughs> Monotony, boredom, tedium. Anything else? Yes. There's one from some ex-movie actress. Nothing interesting. Mm, what does she want? She wants you to come to Hollywood. What? Buster, give me that letter. Oh, all right. Hmm. Yeah. Nora Ashley. Ex-movie actress, you say, Rusty? Mm-hmm. Made a couple of pictures. One of them is being mentioned for the Academy Award. Oh, then why do you say she's an ex-actress? Well, she quit pictures about six months ago. Disappeared. Nobody's heard from her since. We have, Rusty. Hmm? This letter right here, mailed from uh, Azusa, California. Uh, where's Azusa, Rusty? Don't you ever listen to the radio? Oh, it's a little town near Jack Bennyville. Oh. Well, I'd, uh, I'd better read the letter. Say, Dear Dr. Danfield. I've already read it. Quiet. Dear Dr. Danfield, I need your help. If you'll come to Hollywood, you'll find further instructions at the general delivery window, Hollywood Post Office. Don't worry about the expense. I will pay all. I'm desperate. Lenore Ashley. Hm. Well, that's not very much to go on. I told you it wasn't very interesting. Evidently written in just pace, too. That accounts for the brevity. Oh, Dan, we get letters like that all the time. Rusty, I'm going to Hollywood. No, Dan, you're not. Rusty, I said we're going to Hollywood. Oh. Oh, well... <laughs> This looks like it's going to be a very interesting case. Oh, I knew you'd see it that way. Oh, anyway, I, I'd have to go along, wouldn't I? <laughs> you don't know where Azusa is. <laughs> don't worry, I'll find it. In a moment, we'll return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... Now back to Michael Dunn for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Dan, this is the silliest thing I ever heard of. Why, it's just like a, just like a detective story. The letter, you mean? The one we picked up at the general delivery window? Yes, only it wasn't a letter. Just an envelope containing the automobile road map. Yeah, but that blue line, Rusty, drawn in by hand from Los Angeles to Azusa, and then along the road that runs up San Gabriel Canyon, stopping in a little place called Cole Creek. <laughs> Don't you uh, think that's a bit intriguing, Rusty? No, it's more like an old-fashioned paper chase to me. Oh? Oh, and now, Dan, take a good look. This is Azusa. And I'm going to stop at this gas station and ask a few questions. All righty, friend. Something you want? Good afternoon. A little uh, information, if you don't mind. Uh, that's what it says in that sign, friend. Gas, oil, information, and restrooms. Hmm. What do you want to know? Well, uh, take a look at this map, will you? You see here where the blue line stops? Right there? Yeah, that's Cold Creek. Would you by any chance know who lives up there? I know everybody who lives up there. Oh, there's more than one? Yeah, six or seven. Summer cabins, mostly. Fishermen. Good trout stream up there. Season ain't open, though, now. Oh, summer cabins? Yeah. Ain't nobody living in them now. This is winter. Well, mm. isn't there anybody living up there now? Well, could be. One outfit, maybe. Never seen him come down. Oh, who's that? A folks by the name of uh, Atwater. Liza Atwater. Now, thank you very much, my friend. You folks aiming on going up there? Oh, could be, could be. I'd better fill up on gas, then. 
We're out country up there. Ain't another gas station between there and Denver. Okay, friend. Fill her up. Do you think this Liza Atwater is the woman we're looking for, Dan? What do you think, Rusty? Well, Liza Atwater sounds like a phony name to me. Good, Rusty, you're learning. Hmm. <laughs> you probably noticed the similarity between Lenore Ashley and Liza Atwater, both names starting with identical initials. Mm-hmm. Lenore Ashley, alias Liza Atwater. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, slow down, Dan. We're coming to a sign. Yes, yes, I guess this is it. Cold Creek off to the left, it says. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Brother, what a road. Yeah, it's nothing but a trail. Hope we don't have very much of this. Mm. We haven't, look. Oh, Dan, stop. The gate. Yeah, according to our map, this should be it. Uh huh. And look at that high fence. Oh, well, it is undoubtedly a gate. Yes, this is it, Rusty. See, it says that water acres. Hmm. And all of them straight up the side of the mountain. Yeah, that gate's locked. Hmm. And no bell. Now, what do we do? Bell over the fence, Rusty. Here, give me a push. Oh, dear. Careful, Dan. There's barbed wire up here. All right, come on. Oops. There, I'm over. All right, now, here I come. Ouch! Oh, must have touched something, set off an alarm. Dan, oh, that barbed wire. Oh, Dan, you're... Uh, Rusty, remind me on that expense account. Put down one new pair of pants. <laughs> Fine looking oh. pair we are to call on a movie star. Yeah. Torn clothes and dirty. Rusty, look out. Besides that, we're not welcome. That shot came from behind that clump of brush. <sighs> Let's take a look and see if our sniper friend left any clues. Run, Rusty. Our friend may want to take another shot. Oh, you sure he's gone? You can never be sure. But I heard him running away, and don't be too certain he isn't a she. Well, here we are. No chance of footprints. Ground's all covered with pine needles. Here's something, Dan. Yeah, give it to me. An empty cartridge. Yeah, revolver, 38. Yeah, so that's the hive our little bee came from. Well, there's nothing more here, Rusty. Let's make a dash for the house. The hard way. Now we'll play a little knock-knock. Oh, we know somebody's home. Open the door, Richard. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, Richard approaches. Uh, good afternoon. We're, uh... I know. Oh? Come right in, Dr. Danfield. Well, how do you know? You, too, Miss Fairfax. Well, I'll be... They're going to keep us waiting in this waiting room. That's what waiting rooms are for, Rusty. Waiting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, but enough's enough. <sighs> oh. Oh. Where did you come from? Sorry if I startled you. Listen, mister, I don't appreciate guys who sneak up on me from behind. I said I was sorry. Now, I'm afraid that Elsa was a little hasty. Elsa, she's the maid. Hasty about what? About letting you in. Look, you aren't hasty enough to suit me. Dan's torn his, his, his clothes. If and... you're whom we think you are... You'll have an opportunity to change. Change to what? We didn't bring any baggage. That'll all be taken care of in due time. And now, if you please, um, some identification. Identification? Yes. Your credentials. Oh. Oh, very well. Here, is that conclusive enough proof that I'm a member in good standing of the Amalgamated Order of Discerning Detectives? Mm. Courtesy card, New York Police. Yes, indeed, that's quite satisfactory, Dr. Anfield. Thank you. Now I'll have Elsa show you to your room. You'll find some of Miss Ashley's things laid out for you, Miss Fairfax. Some of mine for you, Dr. Danfield. Oh? Uh-huh. You will kindly change and be back down here in, uh, oh, let's say, half hour. Wait a minute. I'm rather inclined not to stay at all. That is, uh, unless I find out the answers to several things. Just what's bothering you, Dr. Danfield? Well, I'd like to know why someone took a shot at us, for one thing. Took a shot at you? You must be mistaken, Dr. Danfield. Oh? If anyone from here had taken a shot at you, I'm very positive they wouldn't have missed. This is the screwiest setup I've ever seen, Dan. There must be a reason. Dan, someone's coming. Hmm? No, I don't think it's the boyfriend. He doesn't make any noise. Oh. It's Elsa. I hope you both feel more comfortable. Thanks, Elsa. We do. What are you doing? Closing the shutters. What in the world for? 
Miss Ashley's orders, ma'am. Mm. Anything else you'd like to know, sir? Yes, Elsa. Do you know how to shoot a revolver? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. I can shoot out the ace of spades at 50 paces, sir. Thank you very much, Elsa. I'll be leaving now, sir. When are we going to see Miss Ashley? You'll have to wait. Hmm. Now, why did she close the shutters? Miss Ashley's orders, Rusty. But why would Miss she Ashley... She probably likes the dark. You know, Dan, I've a good notion we ought to get out of here. Yeah. Good afternoon, Miss Fairfax, Dr. Danfield. I'm Lenore Ashley. Well, how do you do, Miss Ashley? I, uh, I can hardly say I'm glad to see you because I can't. The darkness. Yes, I know. I'm sorry, but for the moment at least it's necessary. And our strange reception? That also has been necessary. Including the pot shot somebody took at us? That also was necessary? Somebody shot at you? Oh, yes, yes, most definitely. I didn't know. Yes, that had the same pattern. Someone didn't want me to see you. Tried to frighten you off. I'm grateful they didn't succeed. What? pattern are you talking about, Miss Ashley? That will come later. First, I must know if you'll take my case. Yes, yes, I believe I will. I feel I must warn you. It might be extremely dangerous. We'll still take it. Thank you. Now I'll turn on the lights. Good Lord. Miss Ashley. Oh, no. Miss Ashley. Your face. In a moment, we'll return for the third act of Danger, Dr. Stanfield, but first... Now back to Michael Dunn for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Lenore, you poor girl. Pretty horrible, isn't it? What a shame. What a shame. What in the world happened? Well, you see my face, so I won't have to tell you why I dropped out of pictures. You poor thing. And how I got this way? Well, after my last picture, I took a trip to the South Seas with an entertainment unit. The war was over, but there's still a lot of lonely boys out there, and I wanted to do my bit. Yes, I know what you mean. While I was out there, I contracted this tropical skin disease. Isn't there something you can do? I've tried everything. Specialists, all the known medicines. Nothing worked. Finally, six months ago, I met a young pharmaceutical chemist. He had just graduated from college. He wanted to work on my case. Well, I was desperate. By that time, I was willing to try anything. I don't blame you. So he took cultures and started to work. After a week or two, he seemed quite hopeful. So I came up here to hide away from the colonists and reporters and waited for his kill or cure. And the cure, it uh, never happened? Oh, but it did. About two months ago, my friend brought me an ointment together with the formula. And it began to show immediately, immediate results. Well, well then why? Now, let me finish, please. Two weeks ago, my supply of ointment began to run out. I arranged to send Ronald into town to have some more made up. But when I looked for the formula, it was gone. Mm, stolen? I believe so. That formula was awfully good, Dr. Danfield. Made up commercially, it could make somebody a great deal of money. Well, the answer seems simple enough. Why don't you have your young chemist friend send you a copy? Because he was killed, Dr. Danfield. Oh. One of those terrible automobile accidents last Christmas Eve. Uh, tell me, Miss Ashley... Have you had any guests since you've been up here? None whatsoever. Then if the formula was stolen, it had to be by someone in this household. Yes. And who are the members of your household? I've met two of them. Are there any more? Yes. Besides Elsa, my maid, and Ronald Derrick, there's Ray Emerson, my chauffeur and general handyman. And uh, just who is Ronald Derrick? Ronnie? Oh, he's my agent. Hmm. Have you any reason to, spe uh, to suspect any one of these three? Yes, Dr. Danfield, I have. I have reason to suspect all three. Derek, you're sort of an enigma to me. Why, Dr. Danfield? The fact that you're still sticking around when Miss Ashley is no longer an asset to the motion picture business. I have reason to believe she again will be. When her face clears up, 
Miss Ashley tells me that you used to be Selena Bruce's agent. What do you know about Selena Bruce? Tell me that she was the actress whom Miss Ashley replaced in her last picture. What if she was? When Selena started slipping, I picked up Lenore. When you're in Hollywood, Dr. Dan Fields, you always have to back a winner. However, the thought occurs to me that you might still be on Miss Bruce's payroll, Mr. Derrick. She might very well make it worth your while to see that Miss Ashley is never cured. I hope you're not accusing me of stealing the formula, Dr. Danfield, because if you I'm are... not accusing you, Ronnie, but it could make sense. Besides, from what Miss Ashley tells me, that formula is very valuable. I imagine that the person who had it in their possession would probably make millions. Can't you see I'm busy, Dr. Danfield? I've got these beds to make. Oh, that's all right, Elsa. I'll give you a hand. Here, throw me the other side of that sheet. Uh, why did you leave Selena Bruce's employ, Elsa? No, no, no. Tuck it down good at the bottom. Oh. Uh, who told you I used to work for Miss Bruce? Miss Ashley. Why did you leave her, Elsa? She was too hard to work for. Nothing I did ever satisfied her. Here's the other sheet. Oh, yes, yes. Tell me, was Miss Bruce angry when you went to work for Miss Ashley? Was she? She was as mad as a wet hen. You don't have to tuck this one under. Oh, no? And, uh, I suppose you're completely loyal to Miss Ashley? Why, Dr. Danfield, of course I am. How could you think anything else? Here's the spread, Doctor. By the way, Elsa... If you should run across that formula, I'm sure Miss Ashley would reward you handsomely. That formula is worth millions. Fender trouble, Henderson? Yeah. Now the car hit you? Nope. Run into the gate? Yep. I understand, Henderson, that uh, you're the only other person around here who didn't formally work for Selena Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> you don't talk very much, do you, Henderson? Nope. Why not? People that talk get into trouble. Yes, yes, don't they? You don't look like a young man who would be satisfied to work as a chauffeur all his life. Ain't. No? Nope. Going to make a lot of money someday. You uh, wouldn't be thinking about a certain formula, would you, Henderson? Why would I be doing that? Oh, maybe because that formula could make the person who had it at least a million dollars. Well, excuse me for asking. <laughs> I want to take a look around. Quiet now. I'm being quiet. Yeah, we'll try this room first. Whose room is it? I don't know yet. Shall I turn on the light? No, 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 Rusty. Well, how are you going to see? I'll light a match, silly. Oh. Yeah. Now, let's see. I'll try the bureau first. That ought to be a likely place. What are you looking for, Dan? I don't know. I'm not sure myself. Yeah, I'll take a look in here. Rusty, I found something. What, Dan? What is it? Look out, Dan! Huh? Look out! Oh. oh! Oh! Dan! Danny, are you hurt? Oh. Oh, my head. Oh, Dan. Light a match, Rusty. Oh, just a minute. There. Oh, am I bleeding to death? No, I can see a scratch. Well, there's a lump there. I can feel it. Rusty, Rusty, who was it? Oh, I don't know. I, I only saw an arm raised to hit you. What was I hit with? Well, I'm not sure, but I, I think it was a wrench. Well, uh, well, whoever it was didn't get what they came oh, for anyway. Dan, Dan. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure, Rusty. It's still here. <laughs> Folks. <laughs> Folks. <clears throat> Dr. Danfield wishes to make an announcement. Thank you, Miss Ashley. What I'm about to say is going to make at least all but one of you very happy. I'm glad to announce that the formula has been found. But Dan... Quiet, Rusty. I know what I'm doing. Well, I'm mighty happy to know that. Me too. I thought for a moment you were suspecting me. I knew you'd find it. Never did believe anybody stole it. Well, I'm happy to see you're all happy. Aren't you going to tell us who had it? No, no. I've talked it over with Miss Ashley, and even she doesn't want to know. Oh, by the way, Miss Ashley... Do you wish me to give the formula to you, or would you rather I kept it in my possession until I can take it into your safe deposit vault in the morning? I'll trust you with it, Dr. Danfield. Thank you, Miss Ashley. 
And uh, now you can all go back to your soup. Rusty? Dan, where are you? Over here by the window. Did you do as I told you? Yes. I walked down the hall to my room and opened the door. Then I closed it hard and tiptoed back up here to your room. Nobody saw you? I'm sure they didn't. Good girl, Rusty. But Dan, I don't understand. If you already have the formula, what's all this blind man's buff about? Shh. We're about to have company. Now, Rusty. Hey! Oh. Yeah. Somebody ought to call me Joe Lewis, Danfield. Who? Who? Yeah, we'll light a match and see. Why? Why, it's Ronnie Derrick. Yes, yes, so it is. Here, help me pull him back out of the way, will you, Rusty? I get it. Ronnie was the one who stole the formula, and when you told him you found it, he decided to steal it back. Shh, shh. Someone else outside the door. What is this, a parade? Here I go again. Oh. You know, Rusty, I'm positively getting good. Well, who's this one? Probably Silent Ray, the chauffeur. We use up more matches this way. <laughs> Yes, Dan, that's who it is. Well, I'm glad he didn't see me first. This guy's big. Dan, were they both after the formula? Yeah, looks like, Rusty, looks like. Silly of them looking in the dresser drawer. You wouldn't put the formula in the dresser drawer. Of course not, Rusty. By the way, where did you put it, Dan? I didn't. I haven't got it. What? I never had it. You haven't got it? But you... I said I was going to put the formula in Miss Ashley's safe deposit box tomorrow morning, and I am. Come on, Rusty, we're going to pick up that formula right now. We're calling on Elsa Barton. In a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... Now back to Michael Dunn for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Hey, you know, that's an awfully pretty creek down there, Rusty. Someday I'm coming back and go fishing there. You were lucky on this case, Dan. Hmm? Seems to me you did everything backwards. For instance? What did you want to make that speech at the dinner table for? Telling everybody that the formula had been found when it hadn't been found at all. A little applied psychology, Rusty. I meant to convince everybody that it actually had been found. I did, too, even you. Mm -hmm. That is, I convinced everybody except the one person who couldn't be convinced. Who was that? Elsa Barton, the one who had the formula. She knew if she had it, I couldn't have it. Gee, that's a pretty lake up ahead. But it's full of fish, too. But what good did that do? Hmm? Rusty, I'm surprised you saw the result. Well, do you mean you planned it that way? Of course. Hmm. I made certain that all three had a reason to want that formula by telling each of them that it was worth a million dollars. Then I claimed that it had been found. Let them all know that I had it in my possession. So what happened? The two who didn't have it came to my room and tried to get it, while the one who did have it knew I was lying and simply went to bed, probably laughing up her sleeve thinking that uh, she'd evaded my trap. Well, didn't she? No, Rusty. She walked right into it. By not coming to my room like the rest, Elsa proved herself guilty. The result, the full confession and the formula which she dug up from out of her stocking. Poor Elsa. I hope Selena Bruce paid her enough to compensate for the couple of years she'll spend in state's prison. Gosh, that's a pretty lake. But who was it that took a shot at it? Hmm? Well, probably Ronald Derrick. He already knew its value. He didn't want us around. Wanted to clear a field to find the formula himself. Yes, I'm sure it was Ron who socked me on the head with a wrench when I discovered the 38 in his dresser drawer. Oh, dear, Ronald Derrick. I always did want to meet a motion picture agent. Hmm. You know, Dan, don't you think I'd be good in pictures? No. Oh, go jump in the lake. <laughs> Rusty, uh, you know something? What? I can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> 